Nicole. This is The Pine Cottage. Welcome. I'm here talking about all the things that I've knitted in February. Um, I started off doing a weekly update and then things just kind of went downhill after week one. We went away for the weekend as a family and we had a great time. And then my son got conjunctivitis, also known as pink eye, and he was out of commission for about a week and then he gave it to his mama. So I was off of work for about a week and I'm a nurse, so I couldn't really go into patients' rooms looking like I did. I'll put a little picture in here, it was really gross. Um, you know, we were on antibiotics uh, you know, that were given to us, but I really don't think it was bacterial uh, because I also had a uh, sinus infection, respiratory stuff going on. I'm still kind of healing. Um, I don't want to put anything near my eyes, hence the glasses and the no makeup. So I do apologize for being disheveled today, but this is real life and I wanted to make sure that I got up a video for you guys. So um, I will have uh, past me talking about what I accomplished week one and then I will just chat with you about what happened knitting wise the rest of the month. Hey guys, it's week one of February and it's actually Tuesday, February 7th. We had a couple busy days there, uh, Sunday and Monday, so I didn't get to record until today. But I will just show you um, some of the things that are in process for the month. So as we talked about at the end of January, I am trying to work on making 10 granny squares a month. So for January, when I recorded last, I had seven granny squares. So I did finish making three more so that I could finish January squares and now we'll move into February. So the last three are this one which was also the yarn that I used for my dad's um, birthday sock this past year. And this one is I believe a homespun house. And this one I'm not quite finished with, almost finished with it. I will do it um, after I record here. And that is the yarn. So those are the last three squares that I need for January. So I have 10 completed and then hoping I will have 10 more at the end of the month. The other thing that I've been working on is my February socks. I shared with you that I joined a yarn subscription through the Farmer's Daughter Fiber Company. And they are, if you don't know, a fiber company dyer from Montana. Um, and they um, are creating like a wild flower theme that's going along with a calendar that they have. I can show you up here. I did not purchase the calendar. I actually started the subscription late. So my first month is actually this month, February. So there I dropped the tag. Hold on. So I'm kind of a tangled mess over here. Tag looks like this, their logo. And this colorway is called Bitterroot. And it looks like this. It is beautiful. A nice rosy pink. I am knitting these socks concurrently on DPNs. I prefer DPNs. Um, I use a US 2. And I did the cuff. Oh, I didn't show you the mini. The mini is in this paler. It's kind of getting blown out a little bit. It's in this paler pink. But I'm doing the cuff and the toes in the paler pink and then the leg, you know, the leg, foot and heel in the main color. So I have the two cuffs done and I'm working on my second leg and then I'll do both the heels and then I'll do both the feet and then both the toes and then they're both done. Because as you know, if I don't do it this way, then I struggle to finish the second sock. I am definitely a victim of second sock syndrome. So this is the way that I can do it so that I can finish both socks. The other thing is the cozy comfort throw and 
at the end of last month, I think I had nine mini skeins left to put into the throw, and now I have seven. So I am moving right along. A little slower than I'd like, but it's only been one week, you guys, so it's, you know, not super speedy knitter. So here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, the seven minis that I have left, and I have one, like one and a half um, skeins of the Bear Hawthorne left. So I think that that will be enough to finish the blanket, and I'm hoping that I can finish it by the end of the month, so stay tuned. The other thing, um, so that was the granny squares, the socks, and the cozy comfort throw. And then for February, I have just a little box of minis here to work on February's granny squares. I'll show, show you these minis. This one, this one, this one, Probably gonna have to dig out some more because I don't think this is quite 10. And then these two. So that's week one. Hope you guys are doing great. See you back here next week. one which I'm so excited to show you because I've been snuggled under it for the whole week is my cozy comfort throw and this is a pattern by Molly Clatt of a homespun house and the yarn that I used is the advent calendar the minis 24 minis from Naughty Pine Fiber Company Kayla is the dyer and it turned out I just love it so here's the end here it goes all the way to here and then all the way down here I know it's difficult difficult to see but um, it does cover me from neck to feet which is how I like to be under it when I'm watching t TV or a movie or whatever when I'm snuggled on the couch um, so it is perfect and everyone in the family has used it since it's been finished so that is the first thing my second finished object is a pair of socks, my February socks. Um, I'm actually gonna put it on a sock blocker because I'm getting fancy around here. This yarn is from the Farmer's Daughters Fiber Company. Um, they are a company based out of Montana and I joined their monthly yarn subscription. It's called the Sock Squad. And this is the February colorway. Um, and I think I showed it in, I think I showed this in my week one update, but this is the finished, the finished sock. I did 64 stitches on US2 DPNs. I did not weave in my ends. <laughs> so 64 stitches on US2 DPNs. I did a one by one cuff, one by one ribbed cuff 
and I think I did 15 rounds. <clears throat> and then I did a pretty long leg and I did a three by one rib of the leg. And I did 75 rounds for that. I did a slip stitch, um, heel flap and gusset, and then the foot and the toe. And the cuff and the toe are both in the mini that came with the subscription. So this is the first sock. And the second one, I was knitting them concurrently. I'm just past the heel doing the foot, so I will finish this today. I'm counting this as a finished object because it's going to be finished today. So if you're a stickler for the details and you're like, mm, Nicole, no, it's not finished, it doesn't count, it counts. So I'm just counting it. So that is my second finished, finished object. Um, lots of air quotes happening today. What's wrong with me? Those were the two... Those were the two big things that I wanted to accomplish in the month of February. I, I'm not really giving myself deadlines because I don't, I don't want to feel pressured to knit. I want knitting to be enjoyable. I want it to be something that I want to do and not something that I feel like I have to do. Um, especially since I've been out of work now, I am going to be picking up a lot of time in the month of March and I don't want to feel like I have to, to hurry up and finish something with the limited time that I have at home. So, you know, going into this next month, I just want to say out loud that I'm not putting any pressure on myself to finish the things that I start for March. It'd be nice if I did, but if I don't, I don't. And that's just real life. Like, I don't want to feel like I have to be a knitting machine. I know I've said that before, but it's just really impor important to me to live a slow, intentional life and that means spending a lot of time with my family and doing things for my home and, you know, then knit when I can. So um, those are the two main finished objects. And then, um, as you know, I'm working on some granny squares to work towards a Battenberg blanket, a modified Battenberg blanket. And I finished the 10 um, that you saw uh, for January. And I did finish some squares for February. I didn't finish them all, so I still have some work to do there. <clears throat> the problem is I have all these squares here and I don't know which ones were January and which ones were February. So I have, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This one's still connected to the ball of yarn. So I have 16. So I have four more to do, which is not a big deal at all. I can get that done over the weekend. So then I will be caught up for February. Those squares are going to be alternated with a neutral colored square surrounding each one. And this isn't, this isn't the yarn, but it's this color. This is um, the yarn that I'm doing the other squares in is Bear Muse from Knit Picks. It's a sock, their um, fingering weight sock yarn. So that's going to be in between each of the colored grannies. So I may just do the four that I need for February in the neutral color so that maybe maybe I'll start joining them. I know I said that I was going to join them in the month of December as my advent project, um, but I don't think I can wait that long. I think I would like to join as I go and just so I can see the blanket um, coming together. Um, the colors are going to all be in, you know, earthy tones, um, very similar, so I don't feel the need to have all of the squares done to see how I want to arrange them. I think I'll just start connecting them. So maybe at the end of March, you'll see some progress there. Works in progress. Um, well, that I guess is a work in progress if you if you want to count that. Because I mean, each individual square is a is a thing, but it is essentially a work in progress. I did start I, I cast on a new project for March, um, I am going to be attempting to knit the no frill sweater by petite knit. And I, you know, that's how far I got. Not very far. Um, it's tangled. So, you know, got to start somewhere, right? This uh, beginning of round stitch marker is, let's see if I can, Horse Feather Fiber Company. And it's really cute. She does the sweetest little charms. <clears throat> She does the sweetest little charms. I just love them. This is going to be eventually, eventually a no frill sweater. The yarn that I chose is Knit Pick Swish DK and Nutmeg Heather. And I don't know if I have enough. 
I these are 50 gram skeins and I bought eight of them and I'm knitting the size large because I want an oversized roomy sweatshirt like sweater obviously that's kind of my my thing um, and I don't know if I have enough so I went on the website to order more and they are unavailable until the end of April so my intention was to enter this into the bougie sweat sweatshirt cow that Casey from Young Folk Knits is hosting and I don't know if I'll be able to enter it if I can't get it done in time because I think that cow goes through the end of March but that's okay um, I still plan on finishing it whenever I can get the yarn we'll see how far I get with the yarn that I have and just kind of go from there um, I also wanted to take it to the beach we are going on vacation at the beginning of May so if I don't get it done I won't be able to take it you know with us on vacation but we'll see what happens um, the other thing for March that I plan on casting on is obviously more granny squares um, but then my daughter's birthday is coming in May so I would like to attempt to knit her um, sweater number 21 by my favorite things knitwear she has requested a mesh sweater that she can wear a tank top under and um, her birthday is the first week of May, which is exactly when we will be at the beach. So I thought that would be really appropriate to have for there. So I am intending to cast that on. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it for March or for April. Um, I already have the yarn for it. So we'll just kind of see how things go. It is a top down knit, but the construction is a little bit different than anything that I've knit before. So I'm a little nervous about it. But things that I've watched, you know, I, I searched sweater number 21 on YouTube and some of the people that have made it said that it was a very quick knit. Um, one, one woman knit it in 10 days. I have no idea if that's something that I could do, nor do I think that I'll strive to do it that quickly. But, um, you know, I, I don't think it will take a full month. So that's good. So that might be something that I cast on for March. I also plan on doing a March sock. Um, I did not do a January one and my goal is to do a sock a month. So I do have to make up for lost time there. But for March, I um, am choosing this sock yarn that I had in my stash. This is Hue Loco Merino sock. It's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Um, this is the colorway, the New Yorker. So I plan on using that for the main part of the sock. This for maybe toes and heels, maybe cuff too. And then at somewhere in there using this little mini that I had in my stash. And I think those three colors look very nice together. So this is going to be March sock. I do have some yarn ordered for um, a new cowl that Anna from Brook Willow Knits podcast um, is hosting and she's doing a Vest Friends Mal and I wanted to join that um, because I want to get a head start on my Christmas gifts and I would like to knit a sweater vest for my dad. So I did order some yarn for that. It is not here yet, so I will be sure to show you guys when it comes in. So those are just kind of some plans that are stewing up here that I'm not sure whether I'm gonna um, assign them to March or April, but they will be coming up in one of those months. Acquisitions wise, I did get my March sock yarn for the Farmer's Daughters Fibers Sock Squad subscription. And for March, this is this is called Highwood Sock. It's 80% merino, 20% nylon. This is the colorway California Poppy. This is a beautiful colorway. Um, it's a little bright for my taste, so I'll probably gift this um, as a pair of socks for Christmas. So this will go to somebody. I have a couple people in mind for it, so we'll see who it goes to, but um, I will be making these into a pair of socks. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the fiber content of the sock yarn. So I was kind of surprised. I thought all the socks in the series would be made from the same fiber. Um, this March month is the Merino nylon combination, but for February, um, this one, it was a BFL nylon combination. And without even looking at the tag, when I got the BFL yarn for February, 
I could feel immediately that it was different than normal merino, superwash merino, which I generally buy. Um, superwash merino is very soft, and when I felt the BFL, it's not that it was rough, but it was just kind of coarser, a um, little bit crunchier. Not in a bad way, just different. And so I went online to see what I could find out about what the difference is. I found a great website called The Wooly Cauldron. It's thewoolycauldron.com, and I will link it below. Um, they gave permission for you know people to share this information including their images um, as long as you give them credit which i'm happy to do so please go and read up on it if this is something that you don't know about and would like to learn more um, it was a wonderful resource so basically it, it, the the wool comes from two different types of sheep a, a merino wool is from one type of sheep and the blue faced lester is from the different kind of sheep and the blue blue faced lester uh wool is like tighter coiled and the effects of that is that the socks won't felt as quickly, if at all. Um, they'll last a little bit longer. They're a little bit sturdier because the, the wool, the fiber is coiled tighter than the merino, which I thought was a good thing to know because I, if I can help it, um, want to rewear my socks a lot without getting holes in them. I've already had to... Um, mend socks that I've gifted to my mom because she wears them a lot and she loves them and I love that she loves them but knowing what I know now I'll probably knit her socks in BFL because I know that she wears the socks all the time um, and they'll just last longer for her so I thought it was good information to know um, it was fun to look at the wool actually on the sheep and to visually see like oh that makes sense that um, this yarn would be maybe preferable for socks. Um, I'm definitely someone who is sensitive to wool, but not on my feet. So I don't think that I could use BFL for like a scarf or something like that, but definitely for socks, it doesn't matter. So I think in the future, I will be purchasing more BFL fiber for my feet. <laughs> That's kind of all that I have. I hope that you guys had a wonderful February. I'm praying that March is going to go a little bit smoother for us around here, but I still feel very blessed and happy um, with life. And I'm looking forward to what next month brings. So I hope you are all doing well. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you in the next one.